So whenever you do an evaluation of a property and you determine that it does need peers, what happens from there? Sure. Well, let's just walk through the process of uh, since when we've seen the crack and we get concerned about it, how do we know that crack is meaningful or not? And the primary tool that we use is called an elevation survey. An elevation survey is where an engineer will go out to the property and draw a scale drawing of the home. Of the perimeter. Of the perimeter okay. and the load-bearing walls and the locations of the plumbing, the bathrooms and washer and dryer. And, okay. And we'll, we draw it out by hand on site. It's a great picture of the house with all the rooms. To scale. To scale. Mm -hmm. And we take measurements of the levelness across the whole slab. Okay, and how do you do that? Yeah, we, we have a, an instrument called a zip level, and we kind of choose a, a point in the middle and call it zero, and then we measure the elevation from that reference point. So we might be minus two inches over there, positive three inches over there, minus one inch over there, and then we'll draw the what's called the contour lines, which kind of makes it look like a topographical map, like mountains and valleys. We've kind of seen those topographical displays. I've seen you draw those many <laughs> times before at homes. <laughs> so that, that gives me a sight picture of the shape of the foundation. And then I can mark the locations of those cracks with the knowledge of what the foundation shape is, and I can go, okay, that crack is because of this problem, and and because this is only maybe minus one inch, that crack is not significant. Or if it was maybe down minus four inches, I might say that crack is significant. So it's the combination of the elevations and the distress that we put together. Okay. So when, when does a, a number start looking significant to you? There's a tolerance, and when does it start getting... There is a tolerance, and it is a widely misinterpreted thing, even by engineers, and it's, it's frustrating in my industry. And so I'll just spend a, just a minute and try to clarify what that means. So before I do that... Let me talk a little bit about the difference between an engineer and a foundation repair contractor. Okay. Okay. And then that will lead me into the tolerance discussion. Okay. Okay. I am a professional engineer. I, I, what I don't do is foundation repair. I, I don't come in and, and give you an estimate to fix your foundation. So the, the discussion is the difference between engineers and contractors. I have no motivation to sell you anything. That That's... You know, I, I'm going to get paid an engineering fee whether the foundation needs work or it doesn't. You're a consultant for your professional opinion. I'm a consultant. You're not selling peers. That's right. <laughs> that's right. And, 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 you know, the foundation repair contractor, they, they have a product to sell you, which is fine. That's, that's their business. They, they do good work on the foundation repair, but they have a motivation to sell their product. Some are more aggressive than others. And in a small story, I had a foundation repair company come out and tell me a property needed 30 peers. And I hired you, it was my own home, and you came out, did a full evaluation of the property, and told me that the home needed four peers. <laughs> so, with that being said, I knew the foundation company with their measurements were wanting to sell me their product. Yeah. you know, well in excess of, you know, $8,000 when I really only needed four peers at the home. So I do understand that they are trying to sell their product. That story plays out every day. And unfortunately, it's a perfect sales environment. Typically, it's a real estate transaction. They've got your buyer and your seller standing there. They've, they've got your little crack on the sheetrock. The, the seller needs to sell, the buyer wants the repair done. It, it's, a pretty easy, it's a pretty easy sales environment. People right. are under duress. They're, they're, there's a lot of moving parts. And a lot of times they're not knowledgeable 
and don't have the information of someone like yourself. Or the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Typically, the time. these happens at the end of the option. The home inspector comes in the first couple of days. By the time I get out there, it's day seven. Right. It, or the, the foundation repair guy gets out there. You've got like tomorrow. So you're under duress. And, and, and you know, that's just the, the way it works. The fact is, if you need foundation repair, those contractors are going to, you're going to pay for an engineer on the back end anyway. If you do need repair, they have to pull permits and they have insurance requirements and th they hire a third party engineer to come in. So you're going to pay for that on the back end. You would be a lot better off to just hire the engineer up front. If you need work, you've already got that, that report. Right. They'll take it off the price of their bid. It, it's just that way the engineer is working for you. Correct. It also comes back to the concept that you said previously, if a home is heaving, one of the ways to correct that is to move a perfectly good foundation to match that heave level, but do you really want to move a perfectly good foundation? So it does come back to if you're oversold piers, you're moving a foundation that doesn't really need piers and you're messing with the soils and everything underneath. Yep, that's right. That's one aspect of it. The more common thing is what I call chasing cracks. Okay. Okay. So chasing cracks, and I've been, I've been chasing cracks for years. I've it has happens every day. You install some piers along the front right corner. Maybe you know the typical repair is about ten piers. Okay. And it's usually around the, one of the corners. So you do the front right corner. Maybe you lift it an inch. Well, you know, the, remember the soils move seasonally up and down all the time. And, and what you've done with those piers then is you've stabilized one corner. Well, the rest of the house keeps moving like it does every day with our smile lines. Right. Except now your crack appears over here on this left side because this now there's a pivot point right which makes sense yeah and so you call the contractor back out he goes well yeah you, we need to put 10 more piers around the left corner great now the back of the house keeps moving like it always has and now your crack is on the back corner <laughs> and you peer that corner and then the crack moves over there so you peer that corner and you just chase those cracks all the way around it, it would have been better off, even if it was down the one inch, to just leave it alone, work with some watering, try to rehydrate those soils, but just let the house move. Right, right. That definitely makes sense. The lead into the tolerance question was the discussion about the difference between engineering and contractors. And the, the tolerance is widely misinterpreted. You might have heard people say, well, we're allowed one inch and 30 feet. That, that's, the, that's what people say. I've heard it many times. Yep. Well, ma'am, you, know, you measured to be more than one inch in this 30 foot length. Yeah. Yep. So you know, we need to peer up this corner. That is absolutely the incorrect way to interpret that. The standard is one inch and 30 feet, but it, it's misinterpreted. It's, it's not that you're out of level one inch over a 30 foot span. What that number really means is if you have the foundation and it's bent, I'm, I'm bending this foundation See how it's bent? Mm -hmm. If I drew a line between the top and the bottom and I measured how much that foundation was bent, I'm measuring the bendiness. Okay. Not how much it's down, but how much is it bent. And it's that little distance between the curved foundation and the straight line. That's the measurement of deflection. Of 
And that's what's really important. That's from, what's important. From our time that's together right. that I've learned from you. So where a sales technique is you're down more than one inch and 30 feet, really the, the tolerance, if you really were deflected one inch and 30 feet, your measurements would be more like three inches, four inches. Negative. Negative. Okay. Okay. It takes minus threes and fours to get an inch and 30 feet. It's a lot more than you think. Okay. So what I'm hearing from you and from my experience is if someone is noticing some cracks that are in their brick, interior, exterior, that are more than normal settling, they sh or maybe doors that don't shut properly or windows that don't open, they need to consult an engineer before they decide to have a foundation company come out and give them a quote. They have to have an engineer's report for that foundation company to quote on and be based on because it could be really detrimental to actually peer your house when it's not needed. Could be. It is detrimental to install peers. Uh, I estimate 90% of the foundation repair that we do in this city is not needed. Wow. I'm That's saying, a huge number. <laughs> I'm saying 90% of it, industry-wide, is in that category of smile lines, normal little sheetrock cracks, buyer-seller transactional right. sales. And that's one of the reasons I'm actually doing this video with you and have asked you to take your time out of your busy day to share your knowledge with us because I do see this every day. I learned it very early on when I was selling homes. When I first started with my real estate license, I had a handful of clients that needed some concerns answered. And instead of calling an engineer and paying the, the fee to have an engineer come out, which in the long run is very reasonable compared to having a whole entire home That's period, it. but they would put together these quotes with really scary numbers, you know, 35, 45 peers that are needed. And the more research I did, the more knowledge I had, I realized that I need to suggest to my clients to call an engineer yep. to really see what's needed instead of calling a contractor and being sold something. Now, that's not to mean, that doesn't mean that there aren't a lot of really great foundation companies out there that are gonna be honest and upfront, but there's also, just like everything else, buyer beware, mm -hmm. there are a lot of contractors out there that do wanna sell you their product. And to be honest with you, a, a repair quote with 40 peers is actually probably more legitimate than the majority of them where it's only 10. I, I'm more leery about the 10 peers around a corner because, you know, 10 peers around a corner is hardly even enough to do anything. It's like it's not even enough to really make any effect at all. So when I hear 10 peers around a corner, to me that says that corner's down about an inch maybe an inch and a half, and they're putting 10 peers around that corner. And they, contractors will sell that all day long. They do it all day long. And the problem is, it's these poor sellers who absorb most of that unneeded cost. Right. So I always coach, if I have an opportunity to talk to a listing agent, you know, if, if your buyer's concerned about the foundation, great. That's fantastic. We will not negotiate on a contractor's estimate. Negotiate on an engineer's we'll, report? Yeah, we'll negotiate yeah. on an engineer's report that's been estimated by contractors, even Stephen. Right. No, that's a good point. But we're not going to take three estimates from contractors and... And, and negotiate repair money it. or install peers that's that right. might not be needed. That might not be needed. You know, it, it's kind of like... And it, this this kind of comes down to if you're a homeowner and you have that little crack and it's down an inch and a half and you want to peer it up, that's great. You, you should do that. You're the homeowner. 
But I always consider when, when you're asking somebody else to pay for it, then it's different. Right. Right. If, if I'm asking you to pay for it, then, well, now wait a minute. You know, I, it's down an inch and a half. That's pretty normal types of normal settlement. There's no reason why I should be paying for that. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you would like to view other helpful tips, click here. If you would like to view a neighborhood we specialize in, click here. And to subscribe and stay updated, click on the circle below. Thank you so much and have an awesome day.